Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we did a Q&A session. I apologise for that. I've got an excuse. But we've got some uh, quite a few good questions here. There's about 15 questions we're going to answer here in just a couple of seconds. So here's my excuse. The excuse is, is that we had a litter of puppies. And uh, you probably may have seen them online. I haven't put them up on our webpage yet. But so uh, we had five lilac and tan puppies and I'll just show them to you really quickly because we're really proud of them. This is uh, Tammy, that's Phoebe isn't it? Mm, no. That might be so. Phoebe. That's Phoebe, the that's Phoebe. That's Phoebe right there. That's Phoebe right there. Okay. That's Phoebe. Who's this? And that's, that's a little boy. boy. So who's that's that? Probably, that? That's probably um, Ross. No. Right. Oh, no. Chandler because oh, Chandler. You got, yeah, got bigger. Joey's got is small now compared yeah. to Chandler. Chandler started out being the smallest, so they're peeking Gee. or pooping one. Take your pick. Yes. Yep. 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 Sorry. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So Tammy just took those two away. Put them back with Mum. There's two more, and that is Monica right there because she's a girl, and that is this is the one with a little Nike swoop on his chest. So I think that's. Well, Tammy had to help me. That's probably, that's probably um, Ross. That's Ross, and that is Monica. They're all named after the Friends, the Friends uh, sitcom. And then this is little Joey right here. So just beautiful little puppies. So that's why I've been a bit slow because we've, we've done actually quite a few videos to do with these puppies and the and the development of these guys, the Bo Peep journey of these guys as they went through the various stages pre whelp whelp, coming home first reveal. Feeding puppies, do claws. Anyway, so there you go, Tammy. I'll just put them in here. Okay. So they're going to be you back. You keep on door. saying guys. It's two girls. And two girls and a boy. Yes. Yeah. Three so boys. They're in our incubator. Okay. That's not quite up to temperature yet, but it's getting there. So now Tammy gets to take that away. Thank you, honey. Okay. So that's the reason why we've been a bit slow. Apologise for that. Okay. So here's the questions. Uh, Erica, what type of food do you feed mum during pregnancy and once she has had her puppies? So. If you think about this, you know, you've got a dog that's got puppies inside it, it's, it's going to be putting on, you know, something in the order of, you know, half a pound plus per puppy that's inside her. And she's got to get calories for that. So you will see a dog really start a development in the last month of pregnancy. And that's the point where we want to start upping the calorie intake. We want a dog that's not skinny when it's going into whelp. Um, so we start feeding. Um, Puppy food versus regular adult food. We use dry food. Uh, and then we switch to Bill Jack, which is, and I swear by this stuff, Bill Jack. You can get this in the frozen section. We get it at our local Walmarts, Bill Jack. And it is in a five pound orange bag with some red writing on it. And it's kind of a frozen food. You thaw it out and it's kind of soft and they love it. And we feed that product um, a few days before whelp and all the time that mum's got her babies with her until she's till the babies are weaned so at least three weeks of that and how much do we feed just as much as she wants to eat we make sure that her bowl is full we want her because you know if you think about it you know this dogs that you just saw they each weigh a pound now we're at uh, um, almost two weeks in so she's had to make five pounds worth of puppy she's an 18 pound dog She's had to increase, she's a, third, a third of her weight she's got to put on. And so you've got to get calories on her because she's got to produce milk, this thing got to feed the puppies. So we don't restrict food at all. We don't, we want to get her as much food as we want. And if you're not careful, a dog that has a lot of puppies, man, its spine will be showing all kinds of things if you don't, if you don't get some calories on. So sometimes it's hard to get the calories on. So feed as much as you can. Uh, how do you keep the pap, the, uh, the puppies from tearing up piddle pads when they get older. Yeah, well, good luck on that. I can tell you, and I don't. I can't tell you a thing that you can do to stop them from from tearing stuff up. I mean, it's just the way the puppies are. Um, so there's different kinds of pads you can put down that might be a bit more resilient. We use pee pads. They do, you know. After, basically, when puppies are tearing stuff up, it's because they're bored. And once we get to the point where they're eating hard, uh, soft food, they're not nursing anymore then we transition to a four by four foot playpen with a raised floor so that any of the poop then goes down through the floor and the pee goes down to some collection trays down below. So the things you don't want to happen is you don't want puppies being, you know, 
stepping around and eating poop, you'd as soon get that away from as soon as possible. Obviously, you can't clean puppies up every 10 minutes and puppies are going to pee and piddle and poop all the time. So what we do is we'll put one area in there that has pee pads on it where we hope they'll learn to go and pee and poop in that area and then anything else they pee and poop on goes through down below. All right. A uh, question on the do, I had a video where we do claw as part of that series on those puppies that you saw that we do claw them. So it says, do you pop the do claw out or do you cut it off? So the answer to this is kind of neither. Uh, well, what we do is we put a hemostat on the knuckle and when you do that, the puppy, the puppy equivalent of your thumb, the puppy thumb pops out a little bit. And then I take my fingernail and I wipe that over the top of the hemostat and that just removes it. Just my fingernails doing it. I'm not cutting. I think if you cut it, you'd end up with a bleeding situation. It's, it's a clamp that stops, the clamp stops any blood from, uh, you know, it's a, it acts like a tourniquet. And you literally just wipe your finger off, just lightly wipe your finger off across the top of the hemostat and that will remove the dew claw. How often do you bottle feed the puppy time frame? So we don't uh, um, uh, bottle feed unless we need to. So when would you be bottle feeding? Well, puppies that have, uh, if your mum's got uh, no milk or low milk, and that can happen typically in the first day or two after whelp, then absolutely we'll give a bottle. Uh, if we get to a situation where mum hasn't got milk at all, then we will start tube feeding. And the answer to this is puppies need to be fed about every three hours and they will have nice rounded bellies if they've had enough milk. That's the way that you tell. Um, if you're, typically if you bottle feed, when you put the bottle in its mouth, it's sucking away, and at some point it'll move its head off to the side, and that's typically the point where it's probably had enough. I mean, if it does that when you're first feeding, of course it's not used to the nipple, but once it gets used to the nipple, it's <laughs> sucking away on it, and if it moves its mouth off to the side, time to probably call that enough. And then look at the belly, make sure its uh, belly's nice and fat. Okay. So those are the general questions. Here comes two separate sections. Do you like my cut and paste? Two separate sections. One of them is one of them is on coat colors, and the other one is generally on breeding. So let's take the breeding first. Uh, did uh, Owen did a natural whelp with my Frenchie about a week ago? We we're expecting eight from the scan. Surprised me with two more. She had ten. Diamond comes from a breeder that's been naturally birthing for 30 years. She hasn't needed to do a C-section. Well, I, I tell you what, somebody's been doing that for 30 years and hasn't done a C-section. I bet they've had some losses. Um, I, I recommend, I mean, again, don't know, oh, it's a Frenchie. I recommend people are having Frenchies. You need to seriously consider having a C-section. 85% of all Frenchies are born through C-section. There's a reason for that. They have big heads and mamas have small hips and it's a recipe for having a real problem. And I run into this, I do a huge amount of breedings, and I run into situations where people get caught, caught short or they decide to do a natural whelp, and those are the times that we have the most problems with dead, stuck puppies. So my recommendation to you is, if you are deciding that you're gonna do a natural whelp, then at least do what they did, which is do a scan a few days beforehand so you know how many puppies you've got and you know what size their heads are versus the size of the hips on a female you have a much better chance of success with lots of small puppies. All it takes is one big puppy and you have an absolute disaster in your hands. I don't recommend it. Somebody's been doing that for 30 years. Maybe they only had one puppy in 30 years. I don't know, but I mean, I can tell you this. We've been doing this for Frenchies for about 15 and uh, I've had to do a, a few naturals because I got caught short on it, but uh, I don't recommend it at all. Uh, but I don't want to get into an argument. I mean, do what you want. Just, that's my advice. Russell, uh, Says, not always the case. I had a dog that bred on day eight with a surgical. She was at 1.3 on day four. And day five, she was 4.0 and quantified. Okay, so the, what he's telling me here is, is he's not, he's saying that not all dogs are bred between day 11 and day 13. Sometimes they get there quicker. And he's absolutely right. Most dogs are bred on, on a day nine, is a progesterone level of five, which is ovulation, you breed two days later, which typically would be on a, on a progesterone level of about 15. Um, day four, by day four, by day five, she was four, you'd expect it to be a five the next day, day six, and then you breed that dog two days later, which would be day eight, and that's what he did. So there's nothing here surprises me. Um, th the only point is, is that most dogs, most dogs are bred between day 11 and 13. Some dogs are bred as, as, as soon as day eight, and some as late as day 18. 
what we recommend is to do your first progesterone test at day six, so that if your dog is an early dog, you catch it. Uh, oh, well, we get lots of compliments, and I don't typically read the compliments out because I figure it just act like we're being boastful. But Jessica says, I've learned so much from following you, James. Thank you for your knowledge. So my French is mated naturally. I don't know the date, sadly enough. I've been nervous, Nelly, not knowing the window. The vet says approximately five weeks from sonogram. So what do you do? Well, the answer is, is go follow, look at my video on timing the C-section. Um, there is going to be signs that happen. So typically a week before whelp, you're taking their temperature and you will see a slow decline in temperature. So that's the secret to this, is start taking the temperature and look for a drop in temperature from something around 100 to a number that's below 99. And the closer you get to 99, the closer you are to whelp. Not all dogs show that. So the other things are a dog that is refusing food. It's probably 24 hours from out from having puppies. A dog that is nesting like crazy is probably 12 hours out from the beginning of, uh, of um, um, labor. And a dog that's panting continuously. <laughs> that one needs to go to the vet right now because you're probably in a process. So what does this person do? Keep an eye on the dog. Keep, keep, keep that dog close to you. Watch for all those signs. Specifically the panting because that really means that we're really close. And the last thing you can always do is a progesterone test. A progesterone level of two or less is a dog that's gonna have puppies within two days or less. Take puppies two days before, you're fine. Take puppies more than two days before they would have whelped, you're in trouble. So if you're not sure, keep track of those signs. And as the temperature starts to drop, and as she starts to show some of these behaviors, get a progesterone test to find out where you are. Uh, this is uh, Karina. Uh, she saw the video on the prolapse dog that I said I had successfully uh, AI'd. She says, how do you AI through that little hole? Uh, and the answer to that is, is that a dog that is prolapsed, you still have got a passageway through there, and I've never seen a prolapse when I still couldn't get a finger in there, and then the AI rod through it without any trouble at all. It just looks messy. Um, and, and all the dogs that I've AI, which is not a huge number, but all the dogs that I've AI that have prolapsed, they've all been fine, and they have all had successful litters. So, uh, I'm sure, obviously not every dog that's had a prolapse. It, you know, yeah, I guess you can have really horrible, bad prolapses, and that might be a whole different story. The prolapses that I've seen, you've got um, about you know less than a fist worth of material that's sticking out of them, and those dogs have been successfully AI'd. Um, uh, Abizon says, my female tested a 4.5 on Friday. Would it be too late to do an AI on Monday? Yeah, probably. So 14.5, we'll call that a 15. That's exactly the right time to be doing an AI. The window of opportunity is plus or minus one day from optimum. So that was on a Friday. That dog should really be bred on Friday. You could probably breed that dog successfully with no ill effect on litter size on Saturday. But now you're going all the way to Monday. You're probably going to get either no puppies or a really small litter. So, um, you know, then you have to decide, you know, what, what do you want here? Do you want to go through a C-section and all the trauma and, and, and looking after uh, and the expense of a single puppy? So that's what you've got to face on this. If you don't get any puppies, then nothing lost, nothing gained. But if you only have a single puppy, that may not be a very good outcome for you. Uh... Anthony says, I AI'd my female at progesterone level of 12, then two days after that, what day do you recommend start checking her or the follow-up with my vet? So we don't routinely check for pregnancy. We typically wait. I mean, some people want to know. It's kind of like Christmas. They want to know what they're getting for Christmas. So for those people, go do a relaxing test, uh, or you can do a sonogram, and you can do that a couple of weeks after AI and see whether or not the dog's pregnant or whether there's any viable fetuses in there. We don't do that. What we do is we wait and see how she develops. Typically, after about five weeks, the nipples are starting to get bigger. That's a sure sign. Well, it's a pretty good indicator the dog's probably pregnant. If she's getting a huge belly, how we know where we are, we don't worry about it. We just get our timing, our C-section right. But I do do a radiogram or an X-ray when we're about three days out from, from my first window of my, of my whelp, if I don't think the dog is pregnant, because there could still be a puppy in there and I don't want to get caught short. Um, fat boy, I have a male brindle. Um, and I was writing this one on the board, find the felt pen. Um, 
This dog is okay. So this dog is E M E little E, which is one copy of Black Mask and one copy of of Cream. And the reason they're together is because if a dog is little E little E, it doesn't have a Black Mask. If a dog is big E M big E M, it has a Black Mask. It, don't, it can't be Cream. They're tied together. Uh, okay, and then then this dog is K N. Okay. Or what would you would be good to breed with in for a variety in color for the litter? Okay, so we don't have a lot of information here. We don't know whether it carries blue, chocolate, whether it carries pied, and we'd like to know that. But I'm going to assume it doesn't carry, I'm going to assume this is a brindle dog. And the reason I assume it's a brindle dog is it has a copy of brindle. And, re and remember, brindle and merle are the two things that take a single copy for them to show. Everything else doesn't show. So the cream does not show in this dog because it would have to be EE -E if it was a cream dog. Since it's not, this is a brindle dog. So they want some variety in color. So what can they do? So I would breed to a dog that is not brindle. We'll call that NN here. And if you do that, then half the dogs are going to be KN and half the dogs are not. So you get half brindles and half not brindles. What are the half not brindles going to be? Probably fawns. We don't know that yet because if that dog has chocolate or blue present, the other half of the dogs could be blue brindles, blues, you know, but we, we're just going to assume it's not. All right. So then the other thing I would capitalize on is this. This dog has a copy of cream. So I would pre breed to a dog, and I've kind of drawn that kind of silly. Let's just redo that. Let's just do it the way in the other one. So I would breed that dog to an EE, -E, a cream dog. Because now half the dogs are going to be EME, -E, and half the dogs are going to be EE. -E. Those are cream dogs. Those are creams. And those are not creams, not creams. So if we did that, half the litter is, half the litter is going to be creams. So what are we going to get? If we had four puppies, we're going to get two creams, of which one of those creams is probably going to be brindle, but we can't see it because if you remember from previous videos, cream covers everything. It's like white paint. So I may have drawn that, but you can't see it. We'll come down a little bit. So we're going to get, let's just do this. We'll put it right here. You're going to get two cream dogs of which one of them is likely to carry brindle, but we can't see it because it's covered by cream. Then at the other half, we'd expect to get a brindle dog and a fawn dog. So we get one brindle and one fawn. So there's your litter. You didn't get too many brindles in there, which I don't like to see in my, I don't produce brindles. They just don't sell as well. There's another whole video on this and I've had some people commenting on they like brindles. Great, I mean, not a problem at all. But the point here is, here's your variety. You've got three different colors out of that one dog that was a brindle dog. That's what I would do. And then you might, you know, you could choose a dog, for instance, like a platinum dog. I've got a little boy called Sir Humpalot. Here's a beautiful platinum boy. He would then do this, plus he would also introduce chocolate and he'd introduce blue and uh, into every dog, that, every puppy you produce, which then you could have a whole variety of colors from that. All right, long-winded answer. Um, where were we here? Ba, 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 ba. All right, that's the questions on colors. Here we go. Now we've got questions on. Actually, that was a color question. I don't know why you got it, got it in there. Yeah, cut, we're on color questions. Very good. Okay. Shandy Maynard sent me a, a, some information on murals, and there's quite a bit more to murals that I know about. So there's different varieties of males. There's MC, MC+, MA, MA+, M's, and more. So, Shandy, thank you very much for letting me know about this. I obviously have to go and do some more research because I'm not educated enough on merrells. And I will, do another, I will do a video just on merrells when I fully understand this because I'm not equipped to do that right now. But again, Shandy, thank you very much for pointing this out. Um, and while that's there... I don't have this here, but there's one, there's one that I wanted to talk about where somebody had talked about removing dew claws and they corrected me because I made the statement that I thought that you could remove dew claws on all dogs and it would be okay for the show ring. But the answer to that is not the case. Um, 
crud, I can't find where it is. But the answer to that is not the case because there are some dogs that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot, I didn't get that. There are some dogs that um, you, you don't take dew claw, dew claws from. Um, so, <laughs> and I can't tell you what those are because I have it in front of me. But anyway, so, so the, the answer is, is be a little careful on removing dew claws. French is absolutely fine. Other dogs, you need to check. All right, so Three Curb says, I have a pure white English Bulldog that was bred to a lilac, right? So when she says pure white English Bulldog, um, no, I don't think so. Because, look, I can tell you this about Frenchies, there is no pure white Frenchies unless they're albinos. And they'll have red eyes all the time. And I've never seen, by the way, an albino Frenchie, but I guess they're out there. If you have a dog that is a white Frenchie, it's almost certainly a pied dog. So a pied dog is SS. And what's going on is you could have a what's called an extreme pied, a dog that is, it is, uh, the a pied color, by the way, is a patches of two colors, white background, and another color, fawn, lilac, chocolate, brindle, merle. If it has hardly any of that secondary color, then the dog will appear white. Typically that dog will have a little spot somewhere, like a little spot, tiny little thing the size of an eraser that's the other colour. And it looks like a pure white dog, but it's not, it's a pied. And by the way, be extremely careful with a dog like that, because if you produce pieds and they don't have any colour on their head, they've got a totally white head, there's a very good chance they'll be deaf or other problems. So if you have a pure white dog, I suspect, certainly, now in other, other breeds, white's absolutely there, but in French it's not. So if you have a pure white dog, I would not be breeding that back to a dog that has or carries pies because you're likely to have problems. Uh, so let's get back to this question. No idea the DNA of my white dog, but both of the parents are also white. What, could, what would the puppies be? Not sure if the white is a dominant color. Right, well, we're talking English Bulldogs. I think they're gonna be the same as Frenchies, might be wrong. Uh, but the answer to this is, I would not be breeding that to a pied. And so, Without any more information, I don't have a clue on the DNA that you've got going on here because, you know, that pied dog could carry blue, could carry chocolate, could carry tan points, um, could carry brindle. We just don't know. So unfortunately, that question is a non-starter, but I want to bring it up about the white part. Um, so there's another one here that came to Angie's farm, says that she has a dog that is... A T A. So that is a fawn carries a copy of recessive black. K B K Y. So this is a dog that carries a copy of Brimble. Um, she says it's little M, little M. The way she's drawn that would mean that it's a double mirror, which is a no no. So we're just going to take that out of the equation because I don't know what she's telling me there. Um, I'm not going to put the whole thing up here, but she says the dog is SPSP, All right? So that's spotting or, or, or pied. So, so that is a pied dog. That is a pied dog. She says, my dog is all black with a little bit of white marks. In the light, she looks brown though. Uh, so, so, and then she carries on to say SPSP would be an all white dog, question mark. No. So we're back to this last question I had before. This is a pied dog. If it doesn't show any color but white, then it's an extreme pie, and we're back to this be careful situation. So, um, what, what do you, you don't have enough genetic information to, to say what I breed this dog to, but I would tell you this, I would not be breeding that to act on the pied. Uh, okay, somebody's asking about genetic testing. So what we do is we send our samples off to Animal Genetics in Tallahassee, Florida. They've got a coupon going on right now, normally 130 bucks, but this month through the beginning of November, it is 95 bucks. Do you recommend doing a complete panel? So the question is this one, if you do a single color from animal genetics, and they're all gonna be about the same, it costs you 40 bucks. My pen is lousy, let's get another one here. Let's try it in red. If you go to animal genetics, a single color is 40 bucks. If you do a complete coat color, it is normally 130 bucks, but for this month, it's 95 bucks. So if you did two tests and you spent 80 bucks, 
you might as well do a whole panel and be done with it. And almost always you need to know about, you know, you want to know, especially just depends on the dog about what you don't know about the dog. But in almost all cases, it ends up being just about as cheap to do a whole full panel. So the, the short answer is yes, do a full panel. Getting close to the end here, I've been running along on this. Uh, my pair produce a litter of seven and four, seven, and four of them are brindle. How is that possible? Uh, Mum is a fawn dad, and dad is red. So if either of them carried brindle, they should have been visually brindle, yes. So <clears throat> the answer to this is if you've got brindle dogs, if you had a litter that was half brindle, which is what she had here, she had a litter, he or she, I forget what it was here, but before I get Daniel, he had a litter of half brindles. So what do we think the parents are? Well, almost certainly I would guess that one of them is a brindle dog, we'll call that KBKY, married to, and we'll put this in a Punnett square by the way, so let's just do a Punnett square while we're doing this. So here's our Punnett square. Remember it's a split into four. So here's one of the parents of dogs, KB, Brindle, KY not. Married to a dog that doesn't have Brindle at all. What do you get? You get a KY, KB, Brindle dog. You get a KY, KB, Brindle dog. You get a KY, KY, not Brindle. You get a KY, KY. Remember, you pair these up together. So what do you get? You get half Brindles and half not, which in their case was fawns, half fawns. So, What's going on? I would guess that statistically you'd expect one of the parents had a copy of Brindle, and that's what's going on. That's why you've got half Brindle dogs. Um, thank you very much for watching our video. We would really appreciate it if you subscribe to us. If you think we're great, tell us. We get lots of comments and, co and, and nice things said about us. That's great. Um, sometimes there's some things that, that they think that we've got things wrong and we, we bring those things up and uh, we appreciate you watching our videos. Be nice to your puppies and your dogs. Bye everybody.